Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Craft with Corey. Uh, today we are continuing on with this 1-6 scale RC controlled uh, rock hobby, rock hobby, I believe, um, Rio controlled World War II Willie's Jeep. This thing's really kind of cool, it's a lot of fun. Again, it's G.I. Joe sized. Uh, it's a toy. Yes, I know, it's very nerdy to have a toy like this, but... It's just kind of cool. Um, my father and I have restored a 1944 Willys, so this is kind of cool just to have along with it, alongside of it. Um, we've repainted this with actual Jeep paint, uh, uh, 33070, for those nerdy people out there. I have remarked it with the same stenciling that is on uh, the big Jeep. Uh, but now, time has come to make this thing dirty. Uh, I love kind of weathering stuff when I have to uh, when I have to do that, I love it. It just make, gives us some more character. Um, a lot of people do artificial things, you know, for reenacting. They'll do artificial re um, weathering and dirt and mud and stuff like that, and you never get a hundred percent to it. In my mind, the best weathering is always the natural stuff, and we're going to do that same thing with this. A lot of uh, we're going to put a lot of mud on this, and what are we going to use? Well. Actual dirt. Yeah. Uh, I found this technique off of a couple other uh, YouTubers, a couple other sites. Um, but yeah, this is just literally dirt, clay, out of the garden. Uh, this is dry. But the other materials we're going to need uh, to make everything hold is Elmer's glue, or PVA glue, if you want to be fancy about it. Stuff that will dry clear. Normal craft glue should be fine, too. I got a little bit, I think, heavier-duty stuff because this Jeep will probably go outside. I don't want something that's going to be washed away with water necessarily easy. I want something that's going to be hold. So I got a little bit little bit higher quality, at least in my mind, a little bit higher, little bit higher hold. Uh, this will dry clear. It goes on white, but it will dry clear. But to aid, uh, to, to have some help as far as the coloring, I do have some model paints as well. The One of the biggest things that I love using is burnt umber. So that'll be a big base. Uh, I've also got some uh, Flat Earth, which is FX82 by Tamiya, whatever it's called. This is model color, acrylic color. No, this is Vallejo, Vallejo excuse me. And then I also picked up some light brown splash mud. This is a little bit too light for just using it on its own, but I think if I mix it in, it should be cool. So the process of this is pretty, pretty easy. So let's start with our magical... Bob Ross paint palette. Listen, people, it's cheap. Uh, you can see some of my previous work here. And this stuff really does hold very well when it's dry, uh, this this dirt and mud. So, start off with a nice big dollop. Well, if I can open it. Come on. I believe in you. All right, nice big dollop of craft glue. Uh, I'm going to need a lot of this, so... I'm going to be doing the entire side of it. Oh, sorry, everybody. I'm still working on, you know, the magicalness of filming. So, yeah, that'll work for now. Alright. Next up, starting off with some colors. Let me put these off to the side. And then use the Jeep as my palette. Hey! Perfect in frame. Look at that. I know what I'm doing. So, start off with our burnt umber. Just a couple drops. Sorry. 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 Eh. See, that's pretty brown. Pretty pretty dark brown. But we'll start off and see how it goes. It's a lot of just thoughts and feelings. Again, pull out your inner Bob Ross. Just happy little trees. Let's see how she works in here. See, I should have set the camera up on the other side, so, since I'm right-handed, but that's all right. Just mix her in. Again, the, the white can be, the, the white color here can be a little bit, like, concerning. I understand, it's like, oh goodness, this is going to go on white on the... Uh, your whatever project you're using, but it clears, it, it dries clear, and by adding this, you'll be fine. Alright, this is, uh, well, actually on camera, this looks like, uh, some nice pud. 
All right, let's see here. We're going to experiment just a little bit. Um, I'm going to add one of these. I'm looking at the color at the bottom. And that's pretty clear. Uh, that's almost what it is now. Let's add some splash mud and see how it goes. I don't... There's another version of this fake mud that is textured, a little bit thicker, but I don't think this is... I don't think this particular one is textured. But we'll see how it goes here. Let's try not to get in the way of it. Yeah, that's a little light. I kind of don't like that as much. Let's we'll see what happens here. Kind of matching the colors, this uh, the color of your actual dirt. Yeah, I don't like that as much. So, well, that's easily fixed because we will just add in some more burnt umber and kind of clear that up just a little bit. You know, there's multiple shades of dirt, obviously. <laughs> Some of those real hecklers and, you know, stitch counters, they'll say, Wow, well, that's not the right color of mud for this particular area of, of Europe, of this particular county of France or whatever. I'm like, well, all right, fine. Sue me. That's okay. Uh, I'm kind of comparing it to my other colors that I had here. Maybe just a little, just a skosh more on the burnt umber. Let's get it kind of dark, maybe. Again, just kind of do it by feel. Just happy little mud. There we go. There we go. Get a little bit darker here. Uh, I would suggest when you're doing stuff like this, always practice before you actually put it on whatever you're texturing or modeling or whatever. Uh, you don't want to, you know, use your first shot on your first uh, first attempt here. All right, great. So now I got this. I got some pudding. I got some dirt. Let's make some pudding pies. So just sprinkle it in, and we'll mix it in as we go. Your level of chunkiness will vary. And it's all your desire as well. Let's try that. And we just mix it in. Uh, I left in some sticks and twigs and stuff. So it will kind of come through. Alright. Not chunky enough. I want more chunk. More chunky. And, you know, if it gets too chunky to spread on, we'll just add some more glue. Oh, goodness, I made a mess. Oh, no. Oh, well. Listen, I know the content of this place is kind of weird, but aren't we all just a little weird? All right. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. That looks like some mud I've driven through before. Yeah, well, that looks like some, some definitely muddy stuff we have driven through before. All right, we'll get a skosh more, maybe some finer powdered stuff. Again, you can't really beat, quote unquote, the authenticity of mud when you're actually using dirt. So, all right, there we go, some nice gloopy stuff. I like it. I like it a lot. I don't know about you guys, but I like it a lot. All right, time for the fun part. Putting it on. Careful, careful. All right, there we go. All right, we'll start off here. And just kind of, kind of gloop it on and go. You know, a little bit here, a little bit there. Obviously the tires would get covered in mud. get some chunks down in there and this stuff like I said is pretty strong so get some on the tires so this consistency is a little bit thick 
but that's probably due to the just the consistency of the glue that I bought. You could probably thin it out. Uh, I think this is maybe water-based glue, so you could probably thin it down with some water if you wanted to. Get some nice thick gloops up in there. There we go. Kind of get it covered. Now, I mean, if you were actually driving this Jeep, full scale, obviously, um, you know, your GI back in the time period, I'm sure you would clean off your stuff whenever you can, because that's part of regular vehicle maintenance. But, that's not what we're going for here. We're just going for fun. I am not going to put any on the tread. I may come back later and put it on the tread, maybe, but the thing is, you know, obviously with this thing being an RC Jeep, it moves. So, that's just going to come off, I think. But I may come back later. I also use reference of reference photos of the Jeep that I have and have access to. So you kind of do see that uh, sometimes the tread gets kind of washed off, and then um, the rest of the outside stuff doesn't get washed off. All right, and next up, obviously, if you're in four-wheel drive, you're going to be having whoop <laughs> look at that. You're going to have mud up in your fenders. So, tend like you're spinning tires a lot. So, I'm trying to do this from a weird angle. But this entire fender well would just be covered. Yep. Sometimes you get some runaway stuff. Yep, maybe. But this is kind of just a fun thing I enjoy. You know, thinking like, alright, what would happen if you were actually running this Jeep and had to go through a lot of mud. You know, using the Jeep like how they were originally intended. So, all this would be covered. Notice I am staying away from all electrical bits and moving bits. Because I don't want to affect it. Oh no, I got mud on me. Okay, I think you get the idea with this part. So I'm going to move on. I'm also running low on stuff, and I don't want this video to run long. But, kind of a good glop. I'm going to go ahead and do all the rest of this on the inside, too. And then back here on the actual side, again, think about it if you're driving. You're going to get mud here. You're going to get mud on your sides. A little bit here. And, you know, you can just thin it out just a little bit. Have some muffler, some muffler darkness there. All right, and then on the back, make sure you're in shot. Uh, obviously, you're gonna get a lot. So just mud it up. You can completely cover that thing. That's cool. The the reflector here. Get some on your star, on your handle. All right. More here. Go a little bit more heavier on this than normal, but and you know what? If you don't like it, brush it off when it dries, or wash it off just a little bit. All right. All right. I think that's pretty good. Oh goodness. There we go. And then I'll do the wheel again, but I don't want this to run too long. Uh, let me show you what the other side has currently looking like. Oh gosh, so yeah, muddy tires all up in there. You see some um, some other lighter tan sparkle speckles using different shades. That's cool as well. You got muddy sides. I'll probably come back and remud this as well. Let me put a little bit more mud back here. Kind of make everything even, and then I haven't worked on the back yet, but I will. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. This is not professional work. But anyways, just got a couple cool things. Um, you know, previous video I showed how to do some uh, weathering with silver, or some, excuse me, what, uh, what is it called? Dry, or chipping, chipping, chipping. Like, you know, where ch paint has chipped off here. So, just a couple cool things. You know, this, this is all about just encouraging you to try different things. See what things work, what doesn't.
and just have fun with it. Bring out some inner kids. But anyways, I'm going to continue on with this and see how well this goes. Uh, but uh, hopefully it's uh, it's been a little bit fun for you. Hopefully you can do something enjoyable. And, and this is stuff that I did not know how to do at all. I just simply learned, watched some videos on YouTube and thought, hmm, that seems pretty cool. So I'm going to try it. So don't be afraid to get out there and try some new things. So remember, it, it ain't going to be perfect first time around. Um, but I'm not perfect either, and that's okay. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.